All right, I wanted to record a quick video for Ideogram specifically on how you can make money using it. I promised this in one of my other videos, um, how to make money with Ideogram. There's a few different ways. Obviously, you could use it from a print-on-demand perspective, and we showed kind of tutorial how to do that, right? We made an image in Ideogram. Specifically, I'll go to my profile. I'll go to private here. I'll scroll to this stay cool image, this one, this one, this one, whatever, and you can take this image. You can upload it into Canva, separate the image and the text, right? And it will look kind of like this. Then you could play around with the text, make some edits, fix the spelling, right? Put, add some grunge kind of play with the colors, play with the arc, the effects, and next thing you know, you have a design, right? That's one way, and you can post those designs on Redbubble, on TeePublic, on Merch by Amazon, uh, you name it. The sites go on and on and on, right? You could take those same designs, and you can post them on your own private websites and sell them there. You can post them on Etsy stuff. You could sell them there. So th those are options, right? Those are kind of the obvious options that everybody knows about. Um, What's another way that you can make money off of Ideogram that's kind of close to the print-on-demand world? Well, there's a platform called Creative Fabrica. Now, I just want to go ahead and state I'm not a customer of Creative Fabrica. In fact, I don't even recommend you to be a customer. I don't see the benefit of it. Uh, in fact, it actually will create more problems than it will create benefits. Um, but there are plenty of customers that use Creative Fabrica where you can take different images, different elements, and sell them. Now, some of you might say, why would I sell images? Like, what's the point of selling them? Why can't people just go out and make their own? Well, images, kind of like the stuff you're seeing here, not just images, but fonts, uh, graphics, different kinds of elements that people use in their, in their work, um, helps from a speed perspective, you know, sometimes people don't want to necessarily go out there, create all the images, maybe they have money to spend, and so they'll use your graphics, so I recommend you be a contributor to Creative Fabrica over actually being a customer, um, I know many people who use Creative Fabrica for their own uh, Redbubble stores, and unfortunately, they will get reported and they'll get take down uh, for the, the graphics that they're using because there are other competitives in the exact same niche using the same art. They report them, take them down. Of course, um, the Redbubble people are not really going to argue when a takedown request occurs because that could be a legal matter. So they'll take it down. And that's really not um, going with Creative Fabrica's rules and regulations, right? So Creative Fabrica basically states if you buy it, you can use it based on your license. Um, there's really no rules on that. But the same way that you could report somebody else's work and get it taken down for literally no reason on Redbubble, they could do the same thing to you. And it has happened multiple times, might I add. And I've actually seen some people get their accounts banned. Now, I'm not sitting here saying Creative Fabrica is bad. I just, as a print-on-demand seller who knows how to create my own kind of art, there's really no reason for me to go out there and purchase um, you know, other kind of stuff out there. But anyways, the point is is that you can sell the stuff that you're making through Ideogram on there. Obviously, you would have to clean it up, make it look good, make it look decent, and create them in large packages, right, which these elements do need some work for that to be done, but uh, it's a benefit, right? One of the things I recommend you do before you sell anything on Creative Fabric is the art needs to be upscaled, maybe even vectorized if you want to go down that route, uh, but it has to be cleaned up, right? So, for example, um, I was doing a quick tutorial earlier on here. This is a this is a software that helps me upscale, erase, clean up different images. This image, at one point, I downloaded this from Ideogram, and it was at one point something like 1,200 pixels by 700, and I've upscaled it all the way up to uh, 4,928 pixels, right? So significantly larger. If I'm going to sell images on Creative Fabrica and other sites, I want the images to be high quality. I want them to be very good graphics. I don't want them to be small. I want them to be, if anything, oversized so that the customer can not only enjoy it, but, you know, I want to provide a positive experience. I don't want some old, you know, crusty graphics that are going to raster and create a bunch of different pixels. You know, I don't mind using rasters, but once again, I don't want it to pixelate. Uh, I don't want it to be small. I want it to be looking good. So if you're going to sell on Creative Fabrica, you're obviously going to have to upscale. I'll give you some examples of what you can sell. So this is an output that we created here with a prompt that says, Cute Scottish Fold Cat Vector. 
uh, 2D white background illustration painting, okay? And we have a combination of four different images here. If this was me, this is exactly what I'd do. So I'll take this image, for example, I'll hit download, all right? I would have to create a package of these images for me to sell them. I wouldn't just sell one image the way it is. Once again, I wanna give customers a good deal. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna drag this and drop it. And then what I'm going to do is if I don't see anything immediately that needs to be fixed, right? I'm just going to go straight to my upscaler. Okay. So the image is currently a thousand twenty four pixels by a thousand twenty four. I'm going to click four X. I want it four times the size. And here it is four times the size, 4,096 pixels by 4,096. And there we go. We have the image. It originally looked like this. Now it looks like this pretty much the same. There's really no change except it's larger. Then I would take this and download it. Maybe I would turn it into a vector. Maybe I wouldn't. It just depends on the scenario, but that's an example of what I would do. And I would create more of these. So for example, I would copy the prompt, sit here, paste this. Let's go ahead and paste this actually. And uh, let's hit generate. And I would actually test different generations, different sizes, different models. Um, you have the 0.2, 0.1 is really what I would test with personally. Uh, you have magic prompt on, you have magic prompt off. I have it off currently, but these are different examples of what I would test with and I would create different pieces of art. Like for example, this is a different piece of art, but I would take them and use them. These all, th all four of these images look decent enough, I think, to be able to be out there, except for probably this one. This one is a little bit too blended in right here. But these are pretty decent, right? I can take this, do the same thing, upscale them, remove the background even, put them in a package, sell them on Creative Fabrica. That's one option. Another option that you could do is you can take these images, upscale them, and then upload them to stock photography sites. A big example, one of the most used stock photography sites is Adobe Stock. Another one is Vecteasy. Another one is Freepik. Another one is Dreams Time. I mean, the lists go on and on and on. Um, obviously there's different ways to list them, make sure they get listed and ranked, but I have a few videos on Adobe stock. In fact, you can go to my YouTube channel here and let's do this together. Let's go to auto pilot, autopilot passive income. And you could see here, if I click, we have a videos posted on Adobe stock. We have this video, we have this video. We have, I think I should create a, a playlist if I haven't already. Let me go ahead and see. Did I create a playlist? I don't think I did. I'll probably have to create a stock photography playlist, but we have this video, this video. We have we have this video, Vecteasy, another one here, another one here. Um, yeah, so we do have uh, another one here. We do have some videos, guys. Another one here, another one here. So these are examples of stock photography videos that I've posted. If you want to see more, we have a free members area and paid at members area, but this is the members area. You go to poddegree.com, it will take you here. You click join now, and we have a bunch of lessons, free uh, Redbubble course, free T Public course, basics to stock photography, free course. Any kind of lesson that you don't see a price on like this means that it's free, right? So you can go here, look through all of them. We have an Etsy low competition course. Let me go ahead and keep clicking. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of see the different stuff we got here. And we have paid lessons and free lessons on uploading different art to stock photography sites, right? Uh, how to upload them quickly. And this is just another tool in the arsenal. And anybody who's listening to this, who's joined the paid lessons guys with the stock photography sites and everything like that, this is just another tool in the arsenal to get to that golden 10,000 number. I've said this before, but when you take images, you upload them to stock photography sites in order for you to feel the power of your earnings, like every day cracking and making you, you know, money every single day. Like I said, getting many, many sales every day. Don't quit until you reach 10,000 designs or 10,000 images rather uploaded and approved. Once they're uploaded and approved 10,000, you're going to start noticing, well, you're really going to start noticing them much, much earlier, but you're going to get sales every single day, pretty much. I mean, I don't see a scenario where you don't and uh, you'll be making money and there's no reason why you can't use them. So those are basically three different ways you can make money off of this kind of stuff. Uh, there are other sites that are related to Creative Fabrica, like I said, that are on the stock photography side, like FreePick, like Vecteasy, which you could potentially use, uh, f you know, Ideogram 4, which kind of consider it as a Creative Fabrica alternative. Technically not, but 
you know, similar. Um, but you can use these sites, use it to make you money and turn it as almost like, I don't want to say a side hustle, but take it very seriously, like a job and set a certain amount every day, a certain amount of time, whether it be a half hour, 20 minutes to four hours, whatever number you want to go with, stick to it and do it every single day relentlessly until you reach that 10,000 upload number and then sit back and decide if you want to quit or not. But um, you're not going to see a crazy amount of results unless you do it consistently each and every day. And a lot of the times some people will like, let's say upload only 500 images. And I say only f because you could literally do that in an afternoon, but let's say they upload 500 images, they get approved, but it takes them months to do it. They're not feeling the power of it. But imagine you do that in two hours, an hour, whatever, 500 images, you walk away from it a week down the road after all the images are approved, right? So a week after all the images are approved and you're making 10, 20 bucks, 40 bucks here and there. Next thing you know, you're a lot more encouraged to go out there and do more. And mind you, that's only like a week's worth. So I, I sit here and I say, everybody should be able to do this very quickly, very easily. We got the content out there. I'll leave some resources and links down in the description. But like I said, my process, very simple. Every single image that I make, I would upscale. Absolutely. Um, in fact, if you try to upload some of these to like Adobe Stock, like Vecdeasy, most likely 99.9% .9 of the time they're going to get denied. I think Adobe Stock has a size minimum of, I, and don't quote me on this, I don't remember exactly, but it's either 2,800 pixels, something like that. Basically, I'm making my images much, much larger than they're acquired, um, or at least 1,000, 1,500 pixels over what's required. And I don't even figure, I don't worry too much about what's required because I'm always doing more than what's required anyway. So I have no reason to worry about it. That's why I can't recall the exact number. The point is, is that the upscale is pretty much necessary. You upload them, you make the money. Very simple. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace out, bye.